Welcome back everyone to the Illinois Dynasty on here on NCAA 14 as we have the final regular season game as the 6 and 5 Illinois Fighting Illini will head to Northwestern to take on the 4 and 7. They're called the Wildcats, right? If not, then I'm stupid. But Northwestern doesn't have too much to play for, but since this is their seniors' final collegiate game and final home game, they're probably going to want to win this game. And Purdue definitely cared about that last week when they played Illinois. They smoked Illinois, and Purdue's not good. They ended up 4-8 on the season, giving Illinois a loss. Illinois is 6-5 and five and has already clinched a bowl, but recruiting is a big deal. It was a more of a big deal last week, but this week, they need momentum. They need momentum for recruiting, and they need momentum for their bowl game to finish, hopefully finish out their season 7-5 and five and not end it on a three-game losing streak right after going on a three-game winning streak. So if, Nor if Illinois has this game pretty early in the first half, don't be surprised to see people like Chase Crouch or other backups in the game because, well, if they win this game, like if let's say they're up like 17 to nothing at the end of the first half, Good chance they're going to win. They don't need to play their starters. That simple. So the coin toss, Illinois will be choosing Tails. And it lands on Tails. Illinois will send their defense out first. And Northern Illinois will defend that These one. These Northwestern seniors may be putting their football helmets on for the final time in like a super competitive league. As not a lot of them are probably going to make the NFLs. Evans will find Myers and a quick first down for Northwestern. Purdue got quick first downs, which helped them score early on. We have key seniors like Wes Lunt and Justin Hardy, Dewan Smoot, Julian Robinson, but luckily they all have one more game left. Is on second down, Julian Robinson, one of those seniors I was just bringing up with the sack. He's been very good early on. He's been a little quieter as of lately, but luckily the other end, Dewan Smoot, who I also mentioned was a senior, has definitely picked it up a notch during this second. Illinois made up, or not Illinois, Northwestern made up a good chunk of yards on second down, and now it's third and five for Northwestern as Evans will pass it under pressure, and Julian Robinson for the second time this drive is there with a sack. A quick start for the senior Robinson in his final regular season game here at Illinois. The Illinois offense, a nice punt return by Malik Turner, who has... Arguably have been one of the most dynamic players this season in all of college football, not just for Illinois. As on first down, Lunt under a lot of quick pressure, but Justin Hardy, the senior, with a diving grab and a risky pass from Lunt. Not really in double coverage, but almost in double coverage. Nice coverage by Northern Illinois, but an even better catch by Justin Illinois Hardy. Illinois is now at the four-yard line in his first and goal on the four. Shocker, shocker. As Lunt will toss it to Kendrick Foster. Foster will get around a Northern or Northwestern defender. And that'll be an Illinois touchdown from the sophomore running back Kendrick Foster, who's been great this College year. Football studio update as number three Ole Miss. Definitely could not happen in real life with all their drama. Have defeated number eleven Mississippi State 38 to 21. As Ole Miss, I think definitely deserving of the national championship because I'm pretty sure Northern Illinois is number two. Blech. And I'm pretty sure number one is Ohio State, I want to say. So an Ohio State Ole Miss championship, most likely. That could be a quick play. Northern, Northwestern, I keep saying Northern Illinois. Northwestern is already past midfield. So on first down, Evans will look to pass it. He's not under much pressure. He is all day long to do something. And he's only going to gain three out of it. Big third and 16 for Northwestern. Their drive has been looking good so far, but now this is their first test of the drive. As Evans, a lot of pressure to screen for Barnes. Nice block. That's a first down for Barnes. He gets by the five, and it's going to be a 37-yard touchdown for Garrett Barnes. Studio update as number one Michigan and number two Ohio State. I thought... I forgot Michigan was that good. As Michigan currently up 10-7, to I think the winner of this game will most likely win the national championship. I, I guess Northern Illinois, or, yeah, Northern Illinois must have lost. I, I think know. most of these Northwestern fans would probably rather watch number one Michigan and number two Ohio State battle it out in what might be a bloodbath, but instead, they have this. I don't know, I don't think they regret their choice. Just kidding. Illinois, it probably does not matter who wins that game as... 
They're not making the Big Ten Championship, so it really does not matter. As on second down, Lunt is scrambling under pressure, and he's going to be sacked to end the first quarter by Kyle Bad Davis. News for Illinois is Wes Lunt has been hurt. He got back spasms. He will return to the game next drive, however, is on third down. It's going to be a screen for Ingram. The screen works once for him, but it won't work twice. As Sam Ingram will only gain Second one Second and nine on the 36 for Illinois. Four minutes left until halftime. As on second down, Lunt will pass it. Lunt is scrambling. Lunt will find Justin Hardy, who gets to about the 15-yard line. He's grinding to get that to that end zone, just like how we're grinding to get 300 subs. As it's second and eight for Illinois. Lunt will look to pass. He's looking for his tight end, Ryland Heimer, in the end zone. But it's intercepted by Newby. That could be a game changer. It was looking good for Illinois, but Northwestern snags it. In college, you only need one foot in bounds, and Newby had one foot in bounds. quarterback Jeremy Evans has looked good. Seven for seven for almost 100 yards. He's been efficient. He's made good decisions. And uh, his blocking has been pretty good, too, as Evans is going to run it. Evans will get a first down past midfield. And Evans will finally be down after gaining 22 yards. North down the Northwestern offense is still out on the field. Illinois not burning a timeout as Evans will be deflected as I accidentally press the pause button by Adam Butler. That's his first incomplete pass of the Illinois game. Illinois has two timeouts and they're trying to hold on to both of those timeouts. As Lunt on first down will pass it. Lunt is scrambling. Lunt, risky pass. He finds Jamal Johnson. And he will gain 20. Just use their third and final timeout. 16 seconds left. Ball in about the 19. Lunt will pass it. He's going to scramble with it. He's under pressure. Lunt. He's going to use his legs. And he's going to get the first down. But he's not out of bounds. He's not out of bounds. So North or Illinois is going to have to spike it. 4 3. Illinois is not going to have enough time to hike it. And that's how the first half will end. A score of only 7-7 seven to seven is Illinois did not spike it for some odd reason. The game wouldn't let me, which is very annoying. Illinois does start out with the ball, so they can gain some momentum that they had during last drive. As one on first down will pass it. He's under pressure. He's going to look for Turner one-on-one -on -one coverage. And Malik Turner, without anyone near him, will gain 48 as a beautiful play for Malik Turner, faking out the defender. Illinois is now at the 10-yard line. It is second and seven. As Lund is under a lot of pressure, he has no clue what to do with it, and he's going to be sacked all the way at the 27. There goes Illinois' drive, and Lund actually got hurt on that sack, so Chase Crouch has entered the game, as Crouch will be almost intercepted, but Illinois in will attempt a field goal they're probably going to regret it. The kick from Douglas, not Akeem Manton, is up and it is good. So clearly, Sean Douglas needs to be the kicker. Studio update, Michigan-Ohio State looking very exciting. The fourth quarter has just started, and Ohio State is up by eight, hoping to dethrone undefeated Michigan. Huge third down for Northwestern. Illinois has not had the ball and winning at the same time, which could be a problem for Northwestern if they don't get this first down. As it's a screen for Ingram, and Ingram will, I think he got it, and he did get it, a hard hit from Fountain, but he still got three yard run from Sam Ingram. He looks shaken up. I don't think he's in the game, and he's not by the looks of things. As it's the handoff to Barnes, who had the touchdown earlier, gaining four. For Northwestern, the good news is Sam Ingram is fine. He the wind knocked out of him and will be returning shortly. Bad news is Illinois now is the ball. Is it second and three on the 27? One is going to scramble. One is going to run it. And Lund's going to get a first down being hit really hard. I'm a little surprised he got back Fourth up. Fourth quarter is now underway with Illinois having a slight 10-7 lead in a defensive battle. He's on first down, Lund. He's going to pass it. He's going to look for Mr. Turner. And Malik Turner is inbounds with another nice grab. Third and four for Illinois. They're four, they're four for six today on third downs. This is a huge play for the Northwestern defense. I think I called Illinois Northern Illinois. As Lunt finds a wide open Jamal Johnson, the second, who will gain 19 yards. Second and eight at about the 27-ish for Illinois. As Lunt will pass it. He's going to scramble. He's going to look for Cook. 
And Cook will get to about the four yard line or so. No, he was on the 22. I think I'm blind. Not the 27. I'm stupid. I'm just sorry. Like that it is first and goal in the four. Touchdown. Can I don't really want to say end this game, but like make it not look good for Illinois or for Northwestern is Kendrick Foster with his second touchdown of the day, despite being invisible the second half, extending Illinois' lead. The studio update as Ohio State has officially knocked off unbeaten Michigan. <laughs> As both teams will end 11 and 1, and Ohio State will play in the Big Ten Championship. If Ohio State wins, probably national championship bound, and if not, don't be surprised if Michigan will make the national national championship. So Michigan's hope is not. This all is a big play for Northwestern. It is third and ten. They need a first down. As Evans will be sacked by Booth, and now it's fourth and long. It's first and ten for Illinois. About three minutes left in the ball game, and they have some. Beautiful field position as Foster will lose two, however. It's third and 12 for Illinois at about the 37 ish yard line. I don't really know how easy a field goal would be from here, as it's going to be a nice run from Kendrick Foster, who actually gained a first down, and TCU is going to have to start burning time. It's called Northwestern TCU. I got mixed up with the purple. I've said Northern Illinois and TCU way too many times today. I'm kind of stupid. As another almost first down from Falls. If Illinois can get a first down, this game might be over. As Lunt will hand it off to Kendrick Foster, and he will easily get a first down using all of TCU's. Er, why do I keep saying TCU? Northwestern's time. Illinois timeout. is trying to burn as much clock as they can. It's going to be a handoff to Kendrick Foster, and Foster will prance in the end zone for his third touchdown of the ball game. Douglas, who just made a long field goal, I have all the confidence in the world for him, missed the extra point. I don't think Manson missed an extra it point. It is first and ten for Northwestern, with very bad field position, out about the 12 after a clipping penalty on their, one of their backup running backs, Marcus Foster. As Evans on first down will find Daniels. And Richard Daniels will gain 16 and run out of bounds. Minute 10 left in the game. Northwestern is down by 16. They're going to need two touchdowns and a field goal to take the lead because Samoa missed an extra point. Genius is back to Daniels and another first down for Richard Minute Daniels. Five left. Northwestern is out of timeouts and they're going to need three scoring possessions. As Evans on first down. He is all day. He's going to find a wide open Davis. And Davis will get to the 15. Third and 10 for Northwestern on first down. They spiked it. On second down, it was incomplete. Only uh, Evans' second incompletion of the game. As Evans on third down looking for the end zone. But it's intercepted by Stephen Miller, the killer. And that is definitely the game. And Illinois will finish this season at 7-5. and five. Took one last kneel. As the regular season is officially over, and Illinois will finish it with an over 500 record at 7 and 5, and Northwestern will go down to 4 and so 8. We have another commit as running back Cedric Bailey, who's pretty decent at 71 overall, has officially committed to our team. I believe he's our third recruit. So that's how we're going to end this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm out. Peace. Even better news: we have now taken the lead on Melvin Washington, the corner af the cornerback athlete. Who I really want. He's went up eight ratings. Eric Fisher did not change, however. We're still in second to Purdue. But hopefully we can prove to Eric Fisher after the bowl that we're better than Purdue. And it looks like Melvin Washington will most likely be ours as Purdue and Wisconsin are the only two teams in the battle. Probably not going to look good for Wisconsin. So us and Purdue are probably not best friends right now.